Hi folks, greetings, happy new year. We'll wait until five after to get started. You can start adding your names and any um, agenda items to the meeting notes, which I post a link for in the Zoom chat. I didn't see if anyone else joined. Uh, we'll get started at five after, so just a couple of minutes. And uh, Happy New Year. And you can add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes. Hopefully folks can hear me. Yeah, Happy New Year. All right. Uh, this call is being recording if recorded if you didn't hear the notice when it started and we uh, published these to the cncf youtube channel and the cnf working group um, queue if you want to go look at any of the old ones you can and this one will be published there I welcome, uh, let's see, we are at five after. 
why don't we get started? Meeting notes are posted into the Zoom chat. For folks that are new to this call, this is the Cloud Native Network Function Working Group. It's one of several telecom focused initiatives within the CNCF. And this call has been recorded and will be posted on YouTube at some point after it's done. I'm going to bring up the screen share. And I think that worked. I should be able to see my call there. I mean, my uh, screen share on the call. You can add your name would be appreciated here. This meeting um, group meets Mondays at 1600 UTC. We shift with the time changes, but it's, um, I guess it's, I guess it doesn't shift. I'm sorry, it says it's 1600, but we should be this way for a few more months. And for those that don't know, uh, the main purpose in this group is um, around documenting and publicizing on uh, cloud native best practices for telecom applications running on um, environments, uh, Kubernetes based environments. That's what we're doing, our main focus right now. We have a lot of documentation that we've been working on around use cases, user stories. We're going to be publishing best practices. Um, also publishing or writing up things around problem areas. So if you're trying to utilize the Kubernetes environment and having problem adopting any type of technology or methodologies or whatever, then we want to note those and try to see, you know, what are the problems and what tips and things that we can have to work with those. Um, usually that's general generic vanilla Kubernetes, but if it's specific environments, hosted environments, then we want to know those too. Um, some environments, uh, or I should say, one of the best practices that we had done a lot of talk about was that in the area of security and specifically least privilege. So we had one uh, practice that we wrote up called non-root. So not running your processes and containers as the root user. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do regarding security if, if someone, say, discovered an exploit or there is a bug. Maybe just something goes wrong with your application. So not having root um, limits the damage within the container. There's a lot of other places that um, you can have problems, but this is just one area. So it's recommended to not run root. And um, we've written up some stuff around that. Uh, so that would be one of the areas. I'm going to jump right in. If, if someone has any agenda items, actually, I'll just ask, does anyone have anything that's not written? We have track and pull requests right now. And I, I'll go over the upcoming events as well. But anything else to add? Um, I don't know, uh, Taylor, you remember that I sent you, okay, the, the you know, the very, very early draft of, of my next uh, best practices around mm -hmm server and if we have a few minutes okay somewhere along just uh, a small feedback would be you know helpful for me if it if this is the way to go and start to creating from this uh, uh items in the repository yeah for sure would you like to um drop a link in here and we just get some feedback right now on the call yeah i mean even sure. if it's minor Sure, sure. So you can kind of give an overview of it. And then um, if it's, do you have a common access available on the yeah, document? Uh, yeah, I will open it. Just it me. just opened common access. Um, since if we're going to drop a link in here, don't want to random people on the internet modifying it. But if they can do comments, then you can approve or 
or reject. Yeah. Sure. Um, All right. So just add that um, below the meeting host uh, review open pull request item. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Or have any questions just about um, the CNF working group? All right. Okay, so um, MWC Barcelona, um, is anyone gonna be there? Do you know of any specific interesting events? Uh, I don't know of anything that's made it from people that I know that submitted for MWC. All right, how about uh, one summit? Nope, okay. So KubeCon EU, um, CFPs are closed. So if you didn't get them in, it's too late for that. But if you have something interesting, um, feel free to add add a, um, an entry here just so that we know about it and everyone in the group can see it. Um, hi, Nikolai. I can, I, can, I, I can share, hello, this is Nikolai. I can share that I'm on the program committee for the networking track and there are lots of interesting things going on there. So, and it's, it's a pity that only, only a handful of them will make it to the conference, but yeah. Uh, on one summit or KubeCon? Uh, KubeCon, sorry. All right, cool. Um, well, I guess when when they make it through, we can add them. I guess would be the next thing. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. They but it, people well. that don't make it through, Nikolai, if it seems super interesting, maybe you could tell them to come. I'm talk not allowed that. to. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Yeah. Tell them to come. Tell them to come talk to the working group after they've been rejected. <laughs> okay, this makes sense, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so there is a, there's going to be a, a co-located event that CNCF is putting on uh, Cloud Native Telco Day. So for anyone that doesn't make it through the CFPs, maybe uh, for KubeCon itself, maybe try to get them over, but uh, probably ask them anyways. So if, if you're available um, at those times and you'd like to, um, be uh, present at the co-located event, Cloud Native Telco Day, then uh, let me know. Um, I don't think we have details yet for submitting on that, but we'll get that uh, soon added as soon as we have it. I should hear more this week about that. All right, um, CFP is not open for the NA. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the pull requests. Oh, we have several here. What do we have? 25 days ago. So do, is there anything else on Jeffrey's air gap? What happened with the unicorn? Let's try that again. There's another unicorn, too long. It loaded this time. That hasn't been resolved. This hasn't been resolved. Um, probably need someone else to step in that would be interested in air gap to help. Uh, Jeffrey is no longer at charter and um, is getting things going at his new job and we'll see how much availability has going forward. 
yeah, I don't really see anything else, but this is still something f folks could look at and give some feedback on, uh, especially if you do, like we have some of these that got, they were able to be resolved. So if there's anything where you wanna change and you click on the plus and then suggest and edit is the most helpful way to move it through. Uh, but you can take a look at this one, um, these user stories. So these user stories will be helpful in many areas uh, to help us with the supplemental documentation. I'm going to move on. What do we have? Um, best practice compliance. Oh, yeah. All right. This one, um, folks can look at it. It's not ready yet. Got to get back, continue on it. But this is one of those that are, when, you, when you're looking at a set of best practices or you're, you're working on the test, um, you were, maybe you're working with the CNF test suite and trying to um, pass as much as possible, whatever. You're, you're trying to improve your software and going along, but you found an area where it just doesn't work. This is an area where you don't feel like you can follow a recommended best practice for whatever reason. Um, very valid reasons. Maybe it's in conflict. You're following like HIPAA compliance or something and you can't do it. You can't follow something because it would conflict. Well, this is about, and we need to update the title there, but this one is about documenting any type of exceptions and communicating where you can, where you're, where you're not able to be compliant um, and the reasons and stuff and making that easily accessible for the people that care about this, you know, so this could be the ops team at a service provider or wherever else. Um, documenting the reasons around that and then some suggestions there. So if anyone has comments or wants to add to this, that would be good. But this one is definitely a, a draft right now. Any comments or questions? Otherwise, I'll move on. All right. Oliver, are you here? You are I here. Am. Yep, I hey. am. Here you go. This is all you. I'm going to let you. <laughs> all you right. Can, yeah. You want me to screen share or you want to take over? Yeah, no, it's fine. You can just, you can, I, I'm okay, not, go ahead. yeah, just keep it up there. I, I, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think this is what we um, uh, opened this pull request just before the uh, holidays. Um, I think we, we've done this in the past. We, we have already today. We have a use case which really looks at stateful CNF, um, but trying to go a bit lower level sort of to tackle some of the user, not, you know, not some only use cases, but some of the user stories. Um, I, I opened this up with Taylor here on, you know, just before the holidays. And <clears throat> these are mainly derived out of, you know, what I would say 4G and 5G, um, you know, online charging system perspective or a convergent charging system uh, company I work for is, of a, is a offering a product in this area. Um, and so these are some of the challenges that we face in terms of, you know, cloud native uh, for places where we are uh, dealing with state, we need to manage state as part of a 3GPP compliant uh, 5G core. Um, so that's where these use cases are, are deriving from or use, user stories are coming from. I have tried to genericize them a little bit more. And the reason for that was just simply to try to create some appeal for others who might recognize, uh, you know, some areas where they are also facing some of the similar challenges. And I see that, um, We've had some comments on here that, you know, maybe these are more IT related and 
you know, I, I don't totally dis disagree, um, but they are in fact network related. Um, so we are talking about CNFs, um, talking about network functions. Uh, and I certainly see the CHF uh, as defined at least in, in 3GPP. Um, that is a network function. Um, and therefore, you know, there are some, there's some interesting challenges that I think we need to work around with. So um, by all means, if you have thoughts, comments, um, please do uh, have a look. Um, this would be interesting to see if we can get this uh, to uh, push it a little bit further along. Do you want to give a, a just a quick run through of the stories and use cases? Um, yeah, let's, why don't you come down then to the first one? Okay, so yeah, I mean, basically the way I would look, uh, sorry, go up just a little bit, Taylor, I apologize, uh, right there, yeah. So <clears throat> I will try to run through it fairly quickly. Uh, if you look at the, you know, the way that it works is we start off kind of at the highest level and sort of what I'm doing by doing, the way I've done this is to say, if you look at this use case, you talk about a CSP, a, a, a service provider, you know, just recognizing that there is, you know, almost at the highest level, there's a need to maintain, you know, persistent data, uh, things like subscriber information, account balances, quota balances, you know, different things that are used along the life, the journey of a, of a subscriber. Um, and also recognizing that that data may be fairly static in nature, or it may be very dynamic and changing, you know, all the time. Um, this is just kind of a starting point uh, to this. And then I go through and give just a few examples with the user stories. So, you know, the, and from a user perspective, I have, a, I have an address on file. I may need to change that. You know, I expect my provider to be able to allow me to do that kind of thing. Um, so it's just making the case that the, the CSP uh, needs to be able to handle that. Um, at the same time, then if you move into sort of the point number two here, it starts to move into cases which are more, um, you know, dynamic in nature. So things like I have a balance and I expect just like my bank, I expect my bank to be able to maintain my balance and it should be accurate um, or, you know, things that I have purchased. If it's a, if I've purchased a, a number of, uh, you know, gigabyte, for example, I expect my service provider to maintain that, uh, an accurate balance of that, because uh, that will also be used um, to trigger different decisions, um, whether or not I can use a service or continue to use a service, or uh, perhaps my quality of service has changed because you know some some th threshold has been met. So that's kind of the very first user story or use case of user story. Then you go to the next one, which is basically the way I see this is kind of nested saying, okay, well that's great, I'm in that situation, but you may find yourself depending on what you're what you're doing. Uh, you may also have the, a need uh, for things like real time and low latency. Um, and this is certainly, again, an area from, from a, an online charging system. Uh, the need for real time is quite key. So I've described this in a use case, you know, that basically just des describing it as being able to do perform real time CRUD actions. So, you know, when we create things, um, uh, we want to be able to update them and to delete them and um, and there's a number of different reasons why this would be necessary. And, and one of the main ones from an online charging perspective is that you're trying to limit the financial exposure um, to, to, to primarily the, the, the service provider, right? I mean, I shouldn't allow you to do something unless you actually have the right to do it, whether you have you know, monetary funds or if you've actually purchased already some, again, some you know, quantity of, of uh, some data or you know, events, whatever it might be. Uh, that you're allowed to do. I don't want to allow you to start doing that or continue to do that if you've run out of money, uh, because then I put myself in, in uh, you know, I, I, I basically putting myself in financial risk. So this is where sort of the real time uh, low latency comes in. And if you look down to, if you scroll down just a little bit, Taylor, to the user stories here, um, I just outlined a couple examples. No, not that far, not that far. Just go up a little bit to those three green, yeah. So the user stories here is just kind of, again, playing from a subscriber, doing different things. Uh, the first one saying, I wanna access a service. Um, I'm not gonna go into this in detail guys, but you know, um, you know, just basically saying, hey, I wanna do something, but before I can, you know, CSP needs to be able to determine if I'm allowed to do that. Likewise, if you look at number two, this is really, you know, I'm using a service uh, and the quota that I have, you know, from originally um, been allocated is, is gonna be consumed and therefore, you know, under the period of me using a service, 
<clears throat> there needs to be frequent checks to make sure that I'm not going over and beyond what I'm allowed to do. Um, and again, it may serve to make different uh, decisions, uh, which is the third point. So looking at an example here, you might have in 5G an IoT device uh, in a factory, a smart factory, and you're, it's attempting to, to access higher quality of service network slice um, to um, accommodate a spike in production. So there's a need to you know, get a better quality of service. Well, before we can enable that, um, we may want to first ensure that the device has, you know, the the um, the possibility to do so, or if it has, you know, if it's if it's already utilized, for example, a threshold that was, you know, allocated for the week, for the day, for the month, whatever that might be. So this is just an example of how it might be used, um, you know, and if it, and if you're not uh, if you don't have that threshold or if you don't have that balance. Uh, then you'd be denied, or that particular device would be denied uh, stepping up to a, a higher quality of service. So again, it's just examples of how that really, in the end, it's the persist, you know, the, this persistent and dynamic data is being being used and carried forward to make different business decisions. If you scroll down just a little bit, then uh, uh, Taylor, we get to that next point here, being the high transaction, uh, just a little bit there, high transaction processing. So, you know, in addition to that. You know, again, I'm drilling deeper and deeper to sort of some of the use cases that we face. Uh, and one of the things is that we're dealing with, you know, a, quite a large amount of uh, transactions that are taking place per second. And I think most of us are probably familiar with, you know, if you're looking at it from a 5G perspective, you know, the expectations, this is just going to continue to grow. Um, and we have, you know, some, we have some examples ourselves. I think I've mentioned it um, in here, and I don't remember, give me a second here. Yeah, hundreds of thousands, for example, per second of, of transactions per second. Perhaps there's others out there who have, you know, examples where, you know, there's even higher number of transactions per second. Um, you know, these, but these are business decisions, right? For, from our perspective, each particular uh, transaction is, you know, is eventually a charge uh, that's being, you know, that's being applied for uh, some type of event uh, that has taken place in the network. Um, so this is why we're kind of saying that it's important to be able to do, you know, to handle a very high, uh, high volume. Um, so it's not just, you know, one or two uh, transactions per second, uh, but we're a high number and we're be, you know, needing to do things on a very uh, low latency uh, basis. So that's kind of, you know, that's, that complicates and challenges things technically for us a little bit further. If you go one more, um, uh, a little bit down, acid compliant. So I think from our perspective, this is not an option. Uh, so again, this is something because we're dealing with financial transactions, um, the expectation is that these can be relied on always, that they're accurate always. So when you're making decisions, um, you know, of financial nature, it can't be, um, it, it's not okay to make decisions on things that are not yet accurate or, you know, maybe accurate later. But at the given time, uh, you know, it may be it may be incorrect uh, data. That's that's not that's not okay. So we we you know we are required to be acid compliant. So this is again one of those things that you know you say okay, well how do we ensure that when you're dealing with perhaps you know distributed uh, data um, and you know high volumes and low latency responses, you know things become you know more and more challenging. So that's, you know, again, another one I think would be interesting for us to explore some of the best practices around how, you know, others, you know, it, again, as you follow down this tree, it's sort of how do we handle that? And then if you have to do that as well, how would you do that? You know, what are some of the technologies that, you know, might be possible to use or best practices uh, that might be, you know, useful? Um, I don't want to take all the time here, Taylor. So if you just want to slide down, I think we've got one, maybe two more. Um, the availability and continuity, you know, I'm... Yeah, I'll kind of try to go through these a little bit quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, as users, I guess, if we think about it, you know, we're expecting our services to work, right? I mean, we don't, we, we want to make sure that they're, you know, I, I say at least from a customer perspective, the expectations is that I mean, services that I want to use are available 24-7, 365. So, you know, CSPs need to have that high availability. And I don't want to pigeon us into sort of the, the five nines or something like that. I'm, I was thinking mainly from the perspective of, you know, how you accomplish that, whether it's you, you have the res your resilience and you can, you know, you can spin up, um, you know, if, if you've got a number of instances running uh, of a particular service, 
uh, one goes down, well, it's not the end of the word, world. You have multiple and you're able to handle that. Um, so that's kind of where this one was coming from, um, as is the, the next point is also really, you know, instant and total recovery is basically saying, you know, that persistent data is extremely critical, you know, back to the point. It is making, there's financial implications. There are business decisions which are being made from that data. And again, it's not something we look at at the end of the month. Um, so I want to, you know, erase any notion that this is sort of billing data and, you know, we've got, we still have time, but this is sort of, this is in line service being used. This data is constantly being, uh, you know, accessed in order to make decisions for that subscriber or for that particular device, um, you know, what it can and cannot do or consume. So this is, this is sort of the, the last place where I, I wrap up. And then, you know, I'm sure there are other challenges, other, you know, things that need to be addressed, but these were the the, the key ones that I think from a from matrix perspective, what we what we see and what we face within our uh, area that we work with in, uh, you know, convergent charging systems for 5G. Hopefully that helps. So hopefully it provides some clarity. Thank you, Oliver. Um, comments and questions from everyone. Yeah, and this was to, I don't know if Pankaj is on the, uh, is on the call here, but yeah, I threw a comment in there. I don't, I, I, I just think it's, you know, I, I think there's certainly more uh, examples of where we have some of these same kind of challenges. And I don't think that they, you know, some of them are going to be complementary. Some of them may be, you know, completely new. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, see, I don't particularly see these particular these uh, use use cases or user stories as being accounting related. I think these are very much you know these are they're online charging they're you know convergent charging they're they're in line to service you know experience uh, and 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 very much you know impact the customer experience um, in re in real time in the sense that you know if you you have inaccurate uh, data, you, know, you may be denying a customer service when they should have service or providing them a certain experience. Um, and again, I'm talking people, it's easier for us, but it could be a device, uh, could be a you know, piece of equipment that is, you know, then uh, stopped from doing what it should be doing uh, because it's, you know, not accurate data. And that's why I think this is extremely important to the, to the, to the work that we're doing. Yeah, one thing to always keep in mind is IT related things are used all throughout telecom, just like everywhere else. If you're using technology, then it's likely that both IT, generic IT and problems and generic IT solutions are likely to be, are more than likely to be applicable. They may need some modification, but they're very likely. And of course, these particular set of problems, uh, use cases, user stories, and the context, these are being used by telecom applications that Matrix and other 5G application providers are creating. Um, we can always add more user stories. So I don't want this to be a block. If anyone wants to write up <clears throat> any of this, um, these particular ones, so this is referencing a good, a good paper. It's, also, it's always great, by the way, to reference existing papers and content so we can pull more and more material and show relevance and why it's helpful and important. If anyone wants to take these and um, do a write-up on any of them, especially if it's relevant to you because you're working on these problems, then, then please feel free to. And this can be adding to existing documentation because you feel it's related. Um, 
go in or create new documents um, to add into this section. These are, this pull request is going to the docs folder covering any user stories, user cases, use cases, but you can add new ones there or add to existing. I don't wanna block this though, based on that. So if, if folks can look at it and as long as you don't see any problems, I mean, go update this one, let's get it merged. I'll do, a, I'm gonna do a review, um, Oliver, this week to go through and make sure there's no, you know, spelling or grammar or anything that we don't want to adjust slightly and otherwise uh, you'll have a thumbs up for me in the next couple of days to merge and we want to get um, some reviews here if anyone doesn't have if you're not listed and you'd like to be added as a reviewer then just let me know um, but feel free and add comments and you can put a, a thumbs up in the comments once we have a set of thumbs up and we've addressed any concerns that um, we feel are, should uh, be addressed before merging, then we'll merge it. Similarly for the, this one that Ian's working on, if you add comments, we'll try to address those. And then ideally by uh, next Monday, we can get both of these merge, but for sure the stateful. The air gap may take a little bit longer because Jeffrey's not available. But I think again, this is, these are just areas we're trying to give context and then um, we can add to that context. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Otherwise I'm gonna hand it over to Ben. Okay, yeah. Um, ben, are you ready? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Do you want me to share? Are you ready, Ben? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to let you share. Go okay, ahead. Just, just a minute. Okay, while I'm so getting back to this window. So, uh, again, uh, as part of um, uh, wait a second. Do you see my window? I do. So um, again, I, I just, you know, our last meeting was way back. So I just getting back to the original story, okay, of, of, of adding uh, security related best practices, okay, around the CNF recommendations. And um, I just simply, you know, started to get together, uh, you know, the best practices uh from you know from getting from the top to bottom i mean getting from the most relevant and, and and simplest things uh with some you know very specific with some specific recommendations of best practices so not just a high level uh uh suggestion okay of of, of you know try to like uh you know when we sometimes we joke okay we say that okay try to do your uh, system secure okay but that's the recommendation and it's usually it's not enough obviously so uh what i'm trying to do here is i'm with uh, my proposal was to start from the next network security part of 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 the kubernetes installation and how to set up a cluster okay in the in the telco industry which is you know somewhat uh, um, more, um, uh, I, I would say, more native uses Kubernetes more natively than you know uh, users who are who are using Kubernetes in uh, in uh, by for, through a cloud vendor. So um, so I started to collect all the the, the recommendations are around network and started with the Kubernetes API. Because uh, in the previous meeting, uh, we discussed the, the two main parts, which was in, on one hand, protecting uh, uh, the Kubernetes API server and the access to the API server. And the second part was in the general, the, uh, the protection of the Kubernetes uh, control plane. 
uh, and a, a control plane components. So not, not just the API server, but also uh, the kubelets, the scheduler, the etcd, and stuff like that. So, um, so I just simply started to, uh, I opened this document, okay, and going through, you know, one by one of the, of the configuration of the API server, and simply, you know, uh, taking the configurations, which are, which I think is, are relevant to a secure installation of the API server, um, and, and listing here, okay, what, what is the best practice and how to do it. So, um, for example, okay, uh, disabling anonymous, uh, anonymous requests, okay, uh, in API server. So API server won't, uh, won't do anything for unauthenticated users, uh, which is an option, you know, in, in API server that you can enable for many reasons, uh, uh, anonymous re request to the API server. Um, audit logging, okay, how to uh, setting up audit logging and, and audit log. So uh, you have a, a trace of any kind of uh, security uh, um, event. In case of any kind of security event, you can have a log back of, of, of what was done against the API server, uh, the authorization configuration and authentication configuration. So, uh, um, so one hand, okay, obviously today we are, uh, we are um, promoting also, also in the security we're promoting uh, the role-based access control in any kind of, uh, of setup. Uh, obviously, okay, node authorization is, needs to be allowed, uh, but, but, uh, but you bypassing uh, ABAC um, uh, authentication is, is important, okay? And something up to how we think that, that the modern deployment of Kubernetes should look like. Uh, and simply, I'm going to uh, to go through okay now of the API uh, client authentic API server client authentication, and uh, progressing from here to to the access to et, uh, to etcd, uh, and setting up secure access to etcd, and you know putting inside you know not just uh, you know, not just the state end, but also okay so how, what what is going to need to be set in the actual deployment okay what is the uh, uh, the actual recommendation of configuration, um, and if at least okay, someone decides that 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 for his deployment it is for some reason it's not good. At least we have to make sure that that they understand what is what chances they are taking and what is what is going to happen if they uh, not use the 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 best practices. And you know, um, I think that this might this might be okay. The resolution here is uh, you know. Is very detailed here, okay, and uh, I, I, and you know really going into kind of different configuration settings. But on the other hand, I think that uh, that this is for someone who's hands-on um, to create the deployments. Uh, it is going to be an, a, a great way, okay, of 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 going through these th things because in general, okay, these are not uh, very new things, okay, these are things which we, many, myself, and other people from, from a SIG security uh, discussed in different places, okay, but uh, but I think that this is going to be, you know, one-stop shop of, 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 of how to set up these things, and I would be glad to, to, to get some input, uh, if not, then I'm just, we'll progress, okay, and, and, and we'll wait for you guys to, how to add it to the actual repository. Thank you so much, Ben. It sounds great to me. Um, I'd like to hear some feedback if folks are have any. Nikolai, you're quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. have any thoughts so, so guys uh, i really okay so you, you can you know slack also uh and you know uh, you can also come i try to enable comments here okay documents so um i i will try to finish by the end of this week okay all the uh, api server communication uh part um then okay uh, i would be glad next week to just discuss how to how to edit in what format we can edit to to the re, to our repository 
and um, yeah. I, I assume that we are also still recovering from. I tried to, um, and I tried to access it from an account that you didn't share with, and it's not accessible. Okay. Can you set Let's... the settings so that anyone in the world with the link, anyone with the link, so that, yeah, sure, yeah, click on share with Armo, bottom left, and then change it to let on the left hand side. Uh, anyone with link, but make yeah. it comment only. Yeah. Yeah. Should work. All right. Now I'm going to refresh. I should be able to access it. Okay, great. Can I access it now? And I should be able to say, make a comment. I'm going to make a comment. Yeah. There we go. I also should be able to, the good thing about this is I should be able to, yeah, see that, that's like a suggest edit. Okay. See that at the, the exclamation point? Yeah, yeah. So sure. everybody that has the link, if you have, um, you know, want to add, you have thoughts or comments, or you just want to update like a grammar, spelling, whatever, um, add some clarification, either add a comment or directly suggest an edit. I'm, I'm gonna delete my suggestion, but you can suggest an edit and then we'll look over it. And if it's, you know, it's aligned, then we can just add that right in. And that'll help Ben move this along. Feel free to look at it and review at your, you know, whenever it works for you, your time. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate this. I think this can be a very good one to get in. Awesome. I give All right. To share. <laughs> if there's nothing else, then uh, we'll end there. And we'll be back next week. Same time. Same Zoom. Oh, hi, everyone. I, I have a question, actually. Oh, go ahead. Hi. So um, I'm, I'm new here. My name is Charles Unese. And um, I wanted to ask, how would I, how would I contribute? Because I'm, I'm pretty new to this technology though, but I was hoping maybe resources I can probably read up, you know, or anything, because I find it very interesting. So yeah. Um, well, if you're wanting to contribute or you're looking, to, I don't know what you're looking for. If you're, if you're developing an application, trying to look for improvements or want to contribute somewhere. Yeah, maybe contribute, probably contribute via writing, I guess, because te technically I'm not that good right now, you know, All in right. this aspect. Yeah. All right, so this is a new area maybe. Um, so the, the working group has um, documentation you can look under the two main areas. I'm gonna try to bring this up. I can screen share as well. Um, let's see, all right. <laughs> so there's these user stories and use case uh, folders. We'll probably move those under this documentation folder. I'm going to bring this up. But this would be some areas to kind of look and understand context around problems that are trying to be solved, um, specific to communication service provider environments. Um, but a lot of these are generally useful for any type of networking environment and problems you're running into. And some of them are um, even applicable to general IT issues. But you have um, under this user stories, this is a security related set of um, user stories, supply chain attacks. So these are 
laying down a bunch of areas where there could be problems. And then we could talk about what are different ways that we can try to address these. If, if a attack occurs, then what are you gonna do? How do you try to prevent them is one thing. And then whenever you can't prevent it and it happens, then what can you do? And that's what a lot of this is leading up to. Um, under the use cases, we have different things like onboarding. So this onboarding, that's about a new application. Let's say you have a firewall or a charging application like what Oliver was presenting user stories related. Um, you're bringing that into an environment. And what are the different things that you may want to think about? And this was actually uh, put forward by a service provider and talking about some of those uh, different life cycle issues, more on the stateful and things you should think about. This one's a more specific to a application and set of, I guess, related applications. So BGP and what you need to think about. Uh, there's, if we go into some of these, they have uh, diagrams related. What are we looking at here? So these are all areas for context. Um, under, let's see, this document uh, area is probably not it. Here we go. So the best practice area. Right now, we don't have any that are published other than the, the non-root. I think in this quarter, we'll probably see a few more and then more and more come along as we've gotten all the rest of the documentation, um, the context, but we should start seeing more in here. These are going to be specific. So if you're interested in bringing over best practices that exist in other areas, so non-root is not something specific to CNS. It's a good practice everywhere. It's utilized in many areas. Um, if you're in a hosting environment, that uses SE Linux like um, Red Hat's um, environments or other hosted solutions, or maybe you're, you're seeing an environment that someone's um, building their own Kubernetes-based environment. They may have root disabled capabilities. So if you're already doing this, but it's a good practice. I mean, even if you're directly running on the host, it's a good practice for a long time to do non-root. Um, we want more like this. And it talks about why a very specific practice is useful and why we're recommending it as a general guideline that you should follow this whenever possible. Um, and this ties into a lot of those user stories that I pointed out before, those supply chain attacks and where non-root could help. And then trade-offs that you're going to have if you go through. And then a lot of references. So I think it was Ponkai on one of the other pull requests had references to white papers. So we want to always have references if, if they're out there and happy to see them. So these are areas I think you could go check out if you're interested in on the documentation side, reading, um, writing up new ones. The CNF test suite, this effort is around implementing um, tests that are checking various practices. So similar to the Kubernetes EDE test suite and really most environments where you're uh, already building software and you want to test and validate that things are running as you expect, the the, um, I guess, implementation side moves at a different speed from the documentation side as we, in the working group, we're figuring out how things make sense to a large group of people and trying to improve how it's communicated. On the test suite, we have, at this point, I think it's close to 50 tests implemented across many different categories. So we didn't really talk about the categories, but if you um, think there's stuff that we're talking about compatibility, the statefulness that um, Oliver and, and talked about earlier, security, there's a lot around security, 
So there's a lot of different areas. So the test suite itself has close to 50 tests, if it didn't hit it um, already over the holidays. And this would be another area if you want to come check out and, and take a look. There's a, if you want to run it, so if you actually have an application that you're wanting to test, there's a quick start on the main readme um, where you can actually run and try the test suite out if you already have a Kubernetes environment and utilize an example CNF. If you don't want to try to configure your own yet, five steps you can test with it. And then you can go check out the install guide and configuration guide for more info. And the individual test, you can go look at the usage guide if you want to read about those. I'm going to bring up security ones here, for example, <clears throat> like privilege es escalation. So this would be on just non-root as their capabilities to do escalation of your container or pod. Uh, this is actually one that's uh, utilizing the um, Cubescape from Armo. And you can go read more about this specific test, but we try to put reasons why it would be problems to allow privilege escalation. Not that you may not need it, that's fine. If you have an exception, it should be written up. But in general, we're saying you shouldn't allow it for most components and most applications. So we have tests around that. Um, there's a lot of other areas and we're trying to write up, include documentation for each of the areas as well as remediation. If you're trying to improve, then we try to link out to different documentation to read up and do those improvements. So if you're wanting more on the implementation side, then getting involved on in the test suite would be a good place. This meets, there's a contributor meeting that meets on Thursdays at 1415 UTC. You can join there. There's slacks for both the working group and the test suite channels, so you can chat in those. But either way, it's you know you can get involved, read up, learn more about the area, and happy to have more contributors in any of it, including stuff as as simple or straightforward as grammar and spelling mistakes. All contributions would be appreciated. <coughs> <clears throat> Amazing. Thank you so much. My bad. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments before we end the call? All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see Thank you again next week. Same Zoom, same time.